now. Hello, everybody. Good evening. Um, all right, so, hey, hey, Peter, good to see you. Good to hear from you. Um, uh, where do we start? Okay, so I just got back from vacation. I couldn't wait to, uh, hey, Barry. I feel like I just saw you, my man. Um, hey, what key should I use a solo on uh, Blue on Black? Uh, I don't know. I got to look at the chords. But um, really quickly, we're going to have a little fun time here. So, um, <laughs> so hello to everyone. Thank you for joining me. I just had a lesson, then I had a cancellation, and I figured let's just go live. Hopefully we get some new people um, who haven't had a Sunday night stream. Uh, the reason I'm going Sunday night is uh, because um, I, I'm, I'm away again pretty much all week, you know, for Thanksgiving. And, and uh, Stitch Method, we've gone two weeks without any sort of, like, entry. So that, that I was like, no way. You know, these, these Stitch Methods need more. <laughs> so, so I figured um, I, I, was, I was on vacation. I just got back. Uh, I just got back, and um, and it was very relaxing, really awesome. I met some cool people out there, and that, and that was fun. Um, you're going to spoil less. No, so it's Sunday night, and I figured, okay, so on the radio, I heard a song, and I was like, man, I A, I know how to play a song, and B, what a cool riff it is. So grab your guitars if you don't have them. Um, well, thank you. Um, <laughs> and... Um, and it, it, we're gonna sh we're gonna enter into the world of chord melody, very easily. Uh, <laughs> okay, no, <laughs> cheddar. We don't we don't want to overdo <laughs> the analogy. Okay, so we're gonna enter into uh, some chord um, melody stuff. Quite easy. I, I a, li a little a little a little um. I don't know caveat, which is I love the melody of the song. The lyrics, the lyrics kind of have some like shady stuff. Uh, in it, but here we go. Let me see if I could, uh, let's see. Uh, I'll play the chords first. Let's see if somebody can play. It's, it's pretty much a 12 bar, but I'm gonna play the style. Let's see if somebody can grab the chords, uh, from, from the chords, just what the song is. I'm not gonna play the melody yet. Here we go. Uh. So let's see what <laughs> let's see what people think that was. I feel like something got a tune. Now, um, do you even shred? Oh, don't start this stuff. <laughs> okay, so here we go. So can anybody? Uh, yeah, there it is, man. Uh, Dapadu in the summertime and Scott Bernstein. All right, hey, what's up, Scott? I haven't seen you in a while. Okay, so the med the melody. I want to say medley, but the melody is such a cool melody, and you can play it while you are actually like holding your chord down. So here's this, like. I have Brian Trepatori and Scott Bernstein on here, and this is the only time we actually get to hang out. We live hundreds, thousands of miles apart, and uh, so good to see both of you. <laughs> this is so funny. All right, so grab your guitars. Uh, there, <laughs> there are more famous ones. Uh, thank you, Scott. So grab your guitars. We're going to go over First Summertime by uh, Mungo Jerry. Go look it up. Uh, that this was written on the cruise. Actually, this was written on piano, and um, and, and the thing, it, it's very hard. I just, did anyone see me just poof, spit something? Um, it's... <laughs> Scott, too funny. Um, it, it, it's actually kind of hard to play it on the guitar. It was written on piano. The piano player is playing it, but it plays it plays really well. And the thing is, is uh, it's fun to try and do. So, and there's a lot of like stitch method isms in here. So let's get started. E chord, and you're gonna start on the B, and you're gonna hammer on with your pinky to the C sharp. So you have this. Okay, I will do the I will do the Saturday's children. Don't worry. You're gonna hammer on to this uh, C sharp second fret. Okay, on the B string, bottom, and here we are starting on the five, starting on the five, right? The power of the five compels you. Here we go. And then the high E string. So we get this, um, we're just going to play the melody, but while we're holding the chord, okay? We're going to hold the E chord, and we have, and then we're going to do the hammer on again from the B to C sharp, and then pull off to the B. So you have, ba 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 then the famous ma minor third to major third, right here on the first fret, open G, and hammer on and go right home to your root. Okay? First part. Now 
now all you gotta do, now let's talk about chord and melody. Um, I don't know, I don't know if I've ever said this to anyone, but when you're playing chord med melody, I wanna say medley all the time, I was just teaching my man Barry, who you saw, a medley, and that's the word that I keep on saying. So, um, uh, when you're playing a chord melody, you have to understand something. Your chord is your cup of water, and your melody is your oil floating on it. It needs to be the thing that stays on top of the melody. You can't really bury it, so you have to use your pick and try to make sure that you're hitting the strings with the melody note on it a little bit harder, or um, or that they're the last ones you hit, so that it's because you had a vegetable medley for dinner. I did have a vegetable medley for dinner, Trumpetori. You're so good. Trump. I miss you, buddy. All right, here, here we go. So, um... Make sure that when you're putting this, I'm going to play it again, but you can hear the melody line. you got to keep that on top of the chord. Notice how at the end, like, I strummed the thicker end of the chord to bring in some chord when my pick stopped here on, the, on that G string. Right? Now it goes to an A chord, standard blues, you're going to bar, bar your A here. It goes right to this like blue shuffle, this 6. Okay, so it's open A. Your first finger is, is on the second fret of the D, but you're not playing it. You're stretching up with your pinky to the, uh, to the F sharp here. So it, from the A, it's the, it's the 6 to the 5, not fret, we're talking about intervals. 6, 5, major 3rd. So you have this A. Okay, so that's a, that's the hardest jump right there. So just of that part. Back to the E chord. B chord, there's no melody, then an A chord, and then in the summertime. So there is Summertime, a cool little chord melody that you could bust it out at the campfire, play it, have somebody else sing it, you know, you just play along, get the groove, get the credit for doing a chord melody. Um, just remember, you know, you play the melody first, but play it while inside the chords. Don't play it individually. Don't, you know, hold the chord down and then make sure your pick, make sure your pick is just uh, kind of like stopping on that high note. Um, and uh, yeah, it does sound like Sugar Mags, you know, because it's an A chord. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's the quick lesson. I'll sit and we'll talk for a little bit. I do have more lessons to teach tonight. I just had a cancellation um, because of Thanksgiving week, and I figured let's let's take a bit. Uh, so now uh, lessons over. If you're in the replay, go away. If you don't like the ch chat, now I'm gonna chat to my peeps. Okay. So questions, answers. Um, what are you guys doing for Thanksgiving? All that fun stuff. This one here. How you guys are doing? Trump, uh, Bernstein. What are you guys doing for Thanksgiving? <laughs> just type in. Type in. Nothing? Everyone's no questions? Oh, I'm just going to sit here like this. Let's see. What can I play? I need a good acoustic. Go, oh, going to the Dead Show. Fantastic. Eating. That's good. That's a... Uh, got to go. Hey, take care, Adam. Uh, just ate a whole pumpkin pie. I know how you feel. Can I have St. Stephen lessons for my birthday next month? I, I'll see if I can get into St. Stephen's. Um, I, is it... Uh, Saint, this even, da, 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 um, is it St. Stephen's that Trey did with, um, with Phil and Friends that's, like, mind-blowing? Oh, yeah. Also heard of Theo for the first time. Love song. Um, watermelon Easter Hay. Yeah, I forgot about that. I, I was on, That was on my to-do list, but then it kind of went to the side. Can talk about controlling string noise for non-playing strings. Yeah, okay, so um, that, that's a... Yeah, see you Friday, Don, yes. Uh, string noise for non-playing strings. Now, are you referring to electric or are you referring to um, acoustic? Actually, it doesn't matter. So, um, my nose is doing great. I'm going to answer the question about string noise uh, really quickly. And uh, lots of family coming over. Oh, good, Kevin. Kevin, I got your review on Masterclass 2. Thank you so much for that. Um, so here's the deal. Um, I taught, okay, I've been teaching, oh my God, I've been teaching oh, 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 a decade and a half now. Um, okay, I'll get there, I'll get there, okay. And um, for some reason, 
I was teaching th th the student. Her name was Michaela, and um, it was the first lesson. And I taught her this, and I said to myself, "This needs to be everybody's first lesson." <laughs> and I never taught it again. <laughs> I don't know why. So, um, so the thing is, is you got. I, I don't have my electric guitar plugged in. Um, I just have my acoustic right now. Okay, so let's talk about like starting position of a guitar. Now, it, by the way, this it, this thing is resting my leg. Everybody's like, "What kind of stand do you have?" I, it, it's, it's resting my thigh. It's big chunky thigh, just resting on it. So anyway, resting um, position on guitar is your palm of your hand, not the palm, the, the the fatty part of your palm, the karate not yeah the karate chop, like to the throat. That part right there um, is resting on the strings. Okay, as if like a ball is gonna pop out and you're gonna catch it, like poo -poo, you know, that's resting position. All right, that's gonna mute all of your strings. All right, resting position in your left hand is that you kind of like want to hang your thumb. Yeah, Bruce Lee palm. You want to hang your thumb like do do do, do on the thumb, hang in, and you just want to touch the string, all the strings. You want to touch all the strings with your fingers. You don't want to push down. You don't want to push down. You just want to touch. You're keeping this thing muted. This is control. This is how you control your guitar. This is the most amount of control you'll have on your instrument, preventing it from making a noise. Now, you want to get used to this. If I were to take a pick and rake the strings, you would hear they are totally dead. They're not just totally dead, they're double dead, okay? They're here and here. I mean, there, there's no noise being made. And, and you'll learn as you play, um, whether you play by bracing, whether you play by leaning on the bridge or loose-wristed, you, you're going to need to learn how to feel comfortable, and this is home, like this is home. Controlling your strings home here and home here. So when you're playing a riff, like, like you can't see this, but I feel my home on my E, A, and D with my palm here, and actually a little bit of my palm here. I feel those strings not, uh, not at all moving. Uh, I'm not just playing it like, like, and if I accidentally hit any of these strings, I have a mute on the strings I'm not playing. The strings that you are not playing, you want to mute on them. And sometimes the mute can be on the right hand, sometimes the mute can be on your left hand. Um, here I'll have a right handed mute on the E and D. It'll come off of the chord, it's back. It's off of the chord, it's back. These strings are not moving, all right? And sometimes when you're playing a chord, um, let's see, uh, uh, okay, so okay, um, like when you're playing, um, all right, so sometimes if you're playing uh, like a bar chord like this, you know, this string you don't want to hear too much because you're playing rock and roll and you don't want to be like, so you're literally going to come off the pressure on your left hand and mute that string, and that should feel like you're under control. Like, okay, so I, I can sit here and not have to worry about, even if I hit that string, it's dead. So String noise comes from knowing your resting and home position. You want to plug in your electrics, turn on your distortion, and sit and hold your guitar, no, like not pushing down, just muted, and then like hear the difference when you let go. All of a sudden, it's gonna be like, whoop, and be like, okay, you know. And you want to learn how to get back to this, whether it's on all strings or one string at a time. And uh, that's something I'll, I'll kind of get into. I hope that helped. Okay. Anyway, keep going. More questions. Blah 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 blah. <laughs> oh man, what time is it? I gotta, I gotta watch my time. Okay, cool. I hope this is helping. Um, wait, Trump, Scott, I didn't hear what you guys were doing for, uh, for Thanksgiving, by the way, so, um, let me know, because I, I'm, I think I'm going to Disney, that's what I think I'm doing, there's no questions coming, or I'm just going to play, play a song while we wait, um, let's see, do, 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 do. <laughs> do, 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 do. there we go, uh, why does it seem like Mixolydian and Dorian are the go-to modes for most people set aside for major and minor, that's a great question, uh, Yes, he does use palm muting on stash or lefty muting. Um, the question was why why do Mixolydian and um, Mixolydian sorry Mixolydian and Dorian um, seem to be popular? Because and this is hard. Um, oh yeah yeah the bouncing <laughs> the ba I'll, I'll get that I was practicing that for you. Come on. I forgot the whole thing. I was practicing that for you. Um, uh, so. Um, Mixolydian, the reason the Mixolydian and Dorian modes are the most popular, and this is this is like a hard thing to understand, but you, and it comes from experience, and that's not me, that's that's not me at all being like, oh, it's a hard thing for you to understand out there. No, it's just like it's a hard thing, which is, um, if you're playing something in a in a, in a major key, right, and uh, the the scale that's going to work the best is a major scale. I mean, that's 
that's it. It's, it. it's like it's like putting chocolate sprinkles on chocolate ice cream. And if you're in a minor key, like, or you're playing something in, in we'll refer to it really as an, an Aeolian mode, which is the minor key, um, the the um, the sound of a minor progression and the sound of the minor scale on top of it. Again, vanilla sprinkles on vanilla ice cream, um, and to you you have to have a major progression to really. If you write a major progression, you pretty much have to use the major scale. If you write an Aeolian progression, you have to use the a, a minor scale. So your question is, why do these things work? Well, it's not about it's not about the scale. It's about the progressions because a major progression and an Aeolian progression or a minor progression have been so used and so overplayed that we we notice them very 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 um, <laughs> cheddar con pound. Very funny. Are they they are very noticeable. The things that aren't noticeable are the Mixolydian um, sound and the Dorian sound. These little tiny tweaks to these scales or to these progressions that warrant you using a different scale that sounds close to the Aeolian or it sounds close to the major, but they have a note in there that's not the major and it's not the minor. And so uh, it's hard to explain. Like you know, when, when something's written in a minor, in minor, like A minor. <laughs> You know, you have to use the A minor scale. It's very hard to work an A minor scale in that doesn't sound like it's from the Baroque period. Okay, what's a major key to minor key? We can talk about that later, but the thing, you know, you have to sit there. Thing is it sounds it sounds minor and 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 minor doesn't really sound good when you're looking for rock and I'm talking a lot but the Dorian progression where you can sit and add that Dorian note as I talk about in um, on stitch method the Dorian is like the new minor and the Mixolydian is like the new major it's it's really about taking the major and minor which have been used so much and so identifiable and you're so like Ugh, I, I can't I can't play that anymore it's the new evolution of where where those modes are going I hope that made sense I, I don't mean to I can sit and talk with about this for hours but um I maybe I'll make a master class on it or something um Big Valley Alberta hello all right so other questions sorry keep going hope that made sense I really hope that made sense it, it's just it sounds better greetings from uh, Bitcoin mine cool nice really because we should talk. Uh, it does. Thanks. Okay. Cool. Um, thanks for lesson. Let's say you have six eight time signature F uh, progression. How would you develop it in solo? Talk? Okay. So let me see that. Okay. So his question, Anthony. Uh, let's say you have a six eight time signature F. One two three four five six. One two three four. Oh, G minor. Nice, dude. One two three. Da, da, How would you develop it or solo top it? Okay. Well, I'm looking at your chord progression, and it's F A minor. G minor C. So the, the F and A minor uh, and the C, you're like, cool, you got this uh, key of C thing going. Um, the way I would develop first would be w with like a walking bass line. You know, I'd stay F and A minor, so F. So the G minor, now when you get the G minor, I, you have to use a G minor scale for your bass line. And back to the C. Now, I'm not saying this is gold, but I would, you know, F. And to the A minor, I would use the C major scale because you're in the key of C. F, A minor, and C. You're in the key of C. D uh, you could be in the key of F. Hold on for one second. Oh, you're in the key of F, aren't you? F, uh, G minor, A minor. Yeah, you're in the key of F. Okay, so there's me making my first assumption and my mistake. And people make mistakes. Okay, so you're in F. So I'd use an F major scale. Yeah, it is, it is an F, yeah. Then one boom. I, I, I hear something. Give me one second. Oh yeah, I hear. I just I heard the bum bum. 
So the first thing I would do is I, I would tack the bass lines first and get the motion of a bass going. You know, like take, uh, I was talking to my wife about this, take like what I call the, the Paul McCartney effect. You know, Paul McCartney's bass lines in the Beatles are nothing but extraordinary when you really listen to them. They, they travel, they move, they do things that you would not expect. So I would first attack the bass line first and let that sit and provide a nice cushion for your progression and then let the progression start to let you into a solo or to a melody but you always kind of want to start your foundation now I'm not saying this is gold, I'm not saying it's amazing, I have to sit with this, I'm trying to do this in a minute but you know, F that was all F major, now F minor scale something to that extent, I hope that made sense, I would start with the bass line um, F major bass line, really, you know, when you get to the G minor, just make sure, you know, what makes a G minor is that B flat. That's the minor third. Boom, 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 boom. G, G minor, that's the minor third. So you kind of really want to put that into your bass line to like, hey, I'm minor, bro. This is minor. Anyway, so that's that. I hope that made sense. Next question. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah, no. I'm, uh, good. Do I have to go? No, I'm not going to go yet. Okay. Does each mode have a signature chord, like mix? Yes, it does. And I will get to that on Stitch Method, I promise. Um... In the mind of Malcolm Young, you know, yeah, I can. You know, the thing is, is like Malcolm Young, he was the best one, four, and five rock guitar player there was. You know, he all of his songs, and it makes it sound like I'm like poo pooing it, but like, there's not one better songwriter uh, who took combinations of ones, fours, and fives and made them sound not like ones, fours, and fives. So I should, should do that. Um, okay, what uh, I don't know what my email is, but my email is uh, <laughs> uh, Stitch Method at Gmail dot com. That's it right there. Uh, more questions before I got to go in a little bit. I hope that you guys are having fun. It's good to be talking to everyone. Um, and you can ask me a question. Uh, that's no problem. Let's see. Uh, it's just, I don't want, I don't want this. Well, this is not what I wanted. Sorry, my computer going. And um, that is so not what I wanted. Why, why, why? God, these websites. Do, 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 do. Um, sorry, I'm looking something up on the computer right now. Would you ever accept Bitcoin payments for lessons? Uh, I don't even know where I'd start with that. Hope you and your family had a I, maybe happy Tofurky Day. Thank you, Chatter. It was very nice. Thank you for your poach. You have told me good, sir. You make this world a better place. Oh, nice. That's nice to hear. Uh, I cannot play flamenco. I used to have a guitar player who was like one of the best, uh, best flamenco players um, I've ever, ever <laughs> heard in my entire life, and it was so good. He was so good, um, but then he moved. Um, okay, hold on. There it is, sorry. Have you ever seen her play the Tonewood amp? No, I have not. I have not. Uh, hold on for one second. Is the Dorian mode for an A minor progression the Dorian mode of a minor scale? No. The Dorian mode is a Dorian, okay, there could be a Dorian chord progression, which starts on the second chord of a key, so if it was A Dorian, you'd be in the key of G, you'd be an A Dorian progression, and an A Dorian scale is like a minor scale, but it has a, 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 um, a sharp sixth, and so, or it has a major sixth, excuse me, it has a major sixth, so you can't, um, you, you can't, they're not the same. They're totally different. How, how do you go from moving down the scale of sounding melodic? I don't know what that means in particular, and I wish that, I mean, that's, that's a, I'm sure that question has paragraphs to it, and I know you try to keep it short, but I don't know what that means, so I apologize. What do you feel are the uses of some auxiliary scales, like the diminished scale or harmonic minor? Okay, so Jonathan Nelson here um, asks this question. What do you feel are the uses of some auxiliary scales. Now, uh, I, John, you and I are gonna be talking and we have 120 people who are watching this conversation, Jonathan. All right, auxiliary scale. A, I've, I, no, I'm not trying to sound rude. I don't know what that means, okay? And that could be a, like, oh, how dare you not, Ian? Auxiliary scales are known by everyone, but but I, I think I know what you're saying is like the rare scales, right? Like the diminished scale or harmonic minor. Okay, so the diminished scale is very easy. You use a diminished scale on top of a diminished chord done. It's, it happens in bluegrass and country and rock and everything. The Beatles use it, everyone uses it. When you play diminished chord, you play, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, set your scale they have at the truckway station. <laughs> Cheddar, you are on fire. How are you not like, you, <laughs> I should have a phone in where Cheddar and I are just talking on the phone, you guys listen. Um, so a diminished scale is used on top of a diminished chord. I mean, that's it. it, it I mean, 
chords can be broken into scales. So I have a painting ready. Oh yeah, send yeah, send it to me. Oh um, Ed, uh, email me. Uh, Stitch method at gmail. Okay. Um, no no, don't wait to send. Uh, well yeah, wait to send till next week. Send it next week when I'm home. Maybe well I'll be home soon. Anyway, send it or wait, just wait. Oh you can email me. Hold on, I'm still talking about this. Well where was I? Um, <laughs> okay. Auxiliary scales. Okay. Harmonic minor, melodic minors. <clears throat> um, those guys. I've been playing for, I don't know, 25 years, 30 years. And I know like three songs that use it. I, I, I know three songs that use these scales, okay? And it's because they have a very unique sound and you have to, you have to hum, like as in like, oh, I heard something in my head. Oh, look, that's the harmonic minor scale. Um, you know, uh, not this, dim diminished scale is good over dominant chords sometimes because the dominant chord has a fifth in it. And if it, you can play a diminished scale, but if you hit that flat five in the diminished scale on top of that dominant chord, people are looking at you like, what the F just happened? So you gotta get off it quickly. It will add a moment of like, what was that? But it's not a perfect fit. And, um, and when you do that, you get into blues, which is really, you know, blues is slang for breaking the rules. So yes, it, it's gonna sound okay, but when I, I'm talking like the kids toys where you have like a circle cut out and the circle fits in. All right, um, and that that diminished chord, diminished scale, like you know, like you can make the triangle fit if you do enough. But anyway, so um, oh my God, look at all these questions coming in. You guys are insane, in a good way, <laughs> in a good way. You're you're keeping me sharp. Um, where could the Byzantine scale one flat two three four? Wait, hold on. One flat two three four five flat six seven. Wow, that's like that's a cool thing. Um. Does that have a flat five in it? No. Okay, Byzantine scale. Byzant so, okay, so everybody write this down. This is a cool question. Let me show you my attack on this. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But this is if somebody said, write a song with your Byzantine scale, first I'd say, what what the hell are you talking about? But here, he says it's a one. I'm, I'm doing an A Byzantine. Uh, one, flat two, three, four, five. Give me one second. And a flat six and a major seven. That's so cool. All right, so now, what's cool about this is if you notice right off the bat, it has a one and it has a five. It has a one and five, and why is that important? Well, because you can play a power chord. And if you play a power chord, you can also play a fifth chord. So you can sit here, you can play a major, but all those other things that are gonna compete, the flat seven, the major six, might compete in a way uh, against that major third that we don't like. So the first thing I would do is I would take out I would take out the major third and I would play a fifth chord and like Oh okay. off the bat, but I would, I would sit in the A power chord first, and then whatever note you stick with, you can turn that next note to a power chord. Does this make sense? Like, boom. Anyway, that's really fun. I might do a stitch method video on that. That was really cool. All right, so uh, th there's my answer. I'd start with just the one five as a base, as a chord base, as your palette of sorts. Uh, I gotta watch your time. Gotta watch my time. All right, uh, we, we got a couple more minutes. Um, the dead are about to stream. Oh, live? Like a uh, video? Or like free? Because I'm not gonna pay for it right now because I have to teach lessons. That was super cool. Crockpot Monday. Hey, Bill. <laughs> Bill, did you get? Did you get? Don't get. I'm, I'm talking to William. Did you get the thing? Do you have to go tomorrow? Do you need me to bring you one, Bill? The thing. <laughs> it sounds so shady, but uh, that's off the chart. Okay, I'm glad you like that. It made sense. Okay, cool. I'm glad you, you know, but that's why, again, not for nothing, you will find some heavy metal bands, right? Okay, I'll, I, I, if I can bring you one tomorrow, I will text you and let you know, uh, Bill. Um, it's not pot. No, it's not. <laughs> it's anti rash cream. I'm kidding. Totally kidding. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. I'm totally kidding. Um, but that's why that's why you find in metal and heavy metal a lot of power chords, a lot of fifth chords, because they provide an open uh, an open palette, uh, uh, like a, a nice palette for some um, auxiliary scales to be used without interfering uh, with some chord tones. So you'll find that a lot of E fives, F sharp fives, five 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 chords, so that the lead guitar player can really experiment. I hope that made sense. 
All right. Uh, other questions. <laughs> you guys are so funny. Uh, any advice for playing chromatically? Um, probably. Uh, hold on. Uh, any, any, uh, playing chromatically. Playing chromatically does not sound good unless you do it right. How do you do it right? You play chromatics by leading into your core tones. I mean, that's what Jerry Garcia does. You know, his, his chromatics, what looks like chromatics are a bunch of minor thirds to major thirds to fours, but really that, that, that sound is like he's going to an E, he's on a C sharp minor, he's gonna just, he's gonna time it and get up there. Um, <laughs> you know, so playing chromatically is not willy-nilly. Nothing on guitar is willy-nilly. Don't, the only thing that's really nilly is, is you can sit and play with the pentatonic and learn how that trust good. But chromatics, you can lead with chromatics to where you're going. If I'm here, um, B, let's see, B, let's see. I had a double up there. But you can lead chromatically into your next, into your next uh, chord tone. Chromatics, you know, when you start playing chromatically, you start like kind of like what's happening, like, um, okay, chromatic, duh, 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 duh. when's it gonna stop? It needs to stop on the next chord change and you gotta hit it, so you plan accordingly. If you're here, you know, you, you can bring it up to the next chord tone. You find that a lot where it's traveling to your next thing. It's not in the middle, um, even if it's in the middle, it'd be traveling to the next stopping point. So to play chromatically, you have to know where you want to stop and then you can play chromatically there and people will be like, that was awesome. That Whatever that guy did was awesome. You're like, yeah, that's right. Anyway, more questions, please, before I go. One or two more questions. I hope you guys are having fun. Thanks for being here. Um, yeah, um, Author Collins, does... I'll have, I'll have some people answer this. Does the Never Lost apply to the Major Pentatonics 2? Let's see what let's see what the crowd says. Gold Old School, um, Original Never Lost. Did you hear the Original Never Lost? I, I play this every day for my students. There we go. Um, let me post a link. Uh, Bobby tonight. Oh, okay. Um, if you can, if you can post a link, I don't know if your links post. Um, uh, well, it's not the same. I it, go look. Um, they are the same kind of, but on my channel on Stitch Method, you can type in Major Never Lost. Actually, just in YouTube, Major Never Lost, and you'll see there's di there's a dedicated pattern for a, a uh, um, it, it is a dedicated pattern for major moves versus minor moves, and it's a really cool video, man. I think, yeah. Is it? Yeah, I think it's a really cool video. Um, yeah, no problem. Major, major always lost, I am. I'm sorry to hear that. We can, I'll get on top of that. What's the quickest way to tell what key a song is in? Ah! <sighs> I'll do something about keys. Keys, I'm telling you, I, if there's any, uh, yes, there's, an, yes, there is. I get, the, my, my number one hate, not hate mail, but my hate comment is, dude, you don't know what you're talking about when it comes to a key of a song. And I hate to say this, I really, really, really do. And it's the case of like the blind leading the blind and they don't um a key is very easy to understand and i will be doing a video on like what is a key of a song um look for two major chords next to each other and there's 90 percent chance that's the four and five yes and that's very that's, that's how you can find the key but what a key means cheddar as well like the real true meaning of a key you know i've heard well it's the chord you start on the chord you come home to or it's it's the it, no it, there's only one meaning of a key print out a key chart and stare at it when you play <laughs> yeah just stare at the chord chart the, the key chart like what you know but we, we can do that i i do i do a lesson with my private students all the time about um what's the gap What's the gallop sound like? A I don't know what the gallop sound is. Are you talking about the metal? Are you talking about? I don't, give um, um, who was that? Hold on for a second. Um, gallop sound. Richard Peters. Um, Richard. Um, stitchmethod at gmail dot com. E email me a link about something that has a gallop sound so I can hear it. In my in the next live feed, I'll try to address it. Um, do you even have any key? Y yes. Yes. Uh, oh. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Really. Um, uh, oh, yeah. What is air? Oh, that's the galloping song. Okay, that's the galloping sound. Is that what you're saying? That's what you're saying. The don't 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 don't. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I'm an idiot. It's like that took me like ten seconds to, to process. Okay, well, this is my last question. All right, galloping sound. It, okay. Um, I'm going to backwards. Okay, so the galloping sound is a technique. Okay, it's a it's a technique of the right hand, and it's down, down, up, down. But the problem is, is that on down, 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 down
a one and a two and a one. Now you hear me saying these these things like and a one. Those have the, the word and means split right down the middle of a beat. One and two. So and is the down and uh, and ha <laughs> ha. One and a two. So down down up 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 down. You play the power chord. All right, I'll let you guys go, okay? All right, so uh, no, uh, those aren't triplets, those are swing eights. One and a two and a three and a four. Triplet would be triplet, 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 triplet. All right, the Dead and Show company has started, so I know you guys want to go over there because that's important. Um, thank you so much. Have a happy, happy, happy Thanksgiving if you're in the States. If you're not in the States, thank you for joining me at this godly hour. I don't know what it is, but thank you so much for all you guys being here. I'll be back up and running next week after Thanksgiving. I just want to get a good life feed in. I'm going to go say goodnight to the kids. Thank you all. Um, have a great night, guys. All right, bye-bye. If I can turn this thing off, that'd be great.